Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Nice to be here. Uh, nice to see so, so many in the crowd here. Um, I, I got the chance to talk to a few of you before. Uh, just a few, uh, where are you from? What do you do? I hear the human rights. I hear some interaction design. Uh, what, what else do you do? Just shout out. Um, graphic design. Graphic design interior. interior design. Graphics. A lot of design. Interaction. Interaction, yeah. Something else than the design? Architect. Architect. Great. Recycling. Recycling. Uh, lovely, lovely, and, and the topic was climate, and I'll do a sustainability design, sustainable design uh, overview on that, and, and tell a little bit of the story of green furniture that I founded, uh, and, and how we think around sustainability, um, and this is where it all started. Um, I, I designed a chair. It became very popular, or even modern, in Paris, only in Paris, and only sort of one year, 2007, uh, sold a lot of chairs to there, truckloads full, uh, but I was shocked how smelly furniture production was. Even though I, well, sourced it here, locally, in Malmö, I thought that well, the government and the, the regulations uh, takes care of things. We can't do things that are dangerous, it wouldn't be allowed, but, well, it is. Uh, and I, I decided to well, show the world that this can be done differently and uh, it can even bring something to the world in terms of other design. So this is where, where green furniture has come now. Uh, I started a, a, an award, it's called the Green Furniture Award. Um, it started in 2009. It's become the world leading design competition for uh, uh, for Eco Design Furniture, uh, which is very nice. Giulio Capellini is in the jury, uh, for example. And um, this was last year's poster. It's possible for uh, your law of design people here to, uh, to compete, of course, if you have good Eco Design uh, concepts. But the competition and the idea of having the competition was to find good Eco Design out there in the world and lift it forward. Show them, show them to the world and do something. Well, produce them and, and let them flourish. And um, this is sort of the benches that have come out of the chair that I designed. Uh, but the leaf lamps here that you see, there is a tree in the entrance. Maybe you saw it. They have one here at Media Evolution City. Um, it's a leaf lamp tree. It's in a smaller version. Uh, living room version won the competition in 2010. And the t-shirt chair won the competition in 2011. It's here in, in, a, in a bench or sofa edition in an airport. Um, and that has become the core of the green furniture uh, collection. So uh, this was the winner of last year with a <coughs> pressed uh, leather, actually leftover piece of leather that couldn't be used uh, and, and uh, on a wooden frame. Um, no toxics involved whatsoever um, and a very nice uh, design. And what I think, talking sustainable design and what sort of the competition would have as a, as a name and I think, well, it's a very interesting aim for you as designers as well, is thinking how can sustainability lift the design. Well, you shouldn't do something, well, you do a great design and, and it's, uh, it has this great function and then you, you think, oh, how could I make it sustainable? Well, pity, I have to sort of use this material. It's not so nice, but well, well, I have to add that and I, I, uh, I need to, um, well, to reduce the toxics. Pity they don't last, the piece of furniture didn't last so long. That's not how I think you should think. I think, I think the sustainability should make a better product. Otherwise, it won't live. So if you make a product less good, well, it's not much of a point. You'll be, you'll be out, out uh, conquered. Uh, but there are ways of making, having the sustainability, making a better product. I'll show you a few examples. Um, and well, one way of having, of, of uh, being better, design-wise then, is unicity. 
Uh, and here you'd get, every time you put this piece of, uh, or a new piece of, of leather over here, it will fold in another way, it'll have another pattern, they'll all be unique. Um, which is one way of making things better. This is also a t-shirt chair here. It has originally leftover t-shirts uh, with a story. They came from somebody, they had a, they had a story, a, a mix of colors and fabrics. And here it's, it's leftover fabrics from, uh, from a Swedish weavery making furniture fabrics. So they actually do lost as well. Um, and and it, it adds unicity and story to the, to the furniture. I'll talk a little bit more about that so you'll see it actually has more, better functions be, just because it's sustainable. Also that piece. Um, but I also uh, shortly introduce uh, uh, a network, the Low Tox Living Network that I started a few years ago when I was again shocked while well, I started making sustainable furniture, the competition and all that, and, and with the t-shirt chair. And then I thought, well, I, there was a book from, from Naturskyddsföreningen here in Sweden um, that um, it's called The Flame Proof Cat uh, that's popped in my mailbox. And, and I read it and I was again shocked. Well, what is in those t-shirts? Um, well, they were recycled and all that, good story but would there be chemicals behind or chemicals in the furniture fabrics that we had started to use? Um, and, and well, there are. Fortunately, in the furniture fabrics we, we had used, they were woven in Sweden and well, they were okay. Now they're even better, but they were okay. Um, so so it, was, it was all right. But I think the precautionary principle can, can talk for that. Have you heard of that before? Precautionary principle is very well illustrated here. I don't know if you can read it, but it says edible on one side, nice mushrooms, and it says poisonous on the other side. You wouldn't eat those. And well, there is a nice little bucket with with, with colorful, uh, nice mushrooms in the middle, and and the lady says, "Don't know," but she sells them. <laughs> um, and that's what you have out there uh, in the in the chemical cocktails. Um, very much of the chemicals uh, in the society are not tested. There is no regulation for chemicals to be introduced. It's only when society can prove that they're dangerous that they have to be taken away. But that takes some 20 years. So, and, and well, a population gets cancer before. And then you take them away. So, so this was, well, keep it safe. Uh, use, if you have to use chemicals, well, use the ones that you know, that have been around, that, that you know they're, they're, uh, they're all right. And, well, better not use them at all, actually. This is a bench. Well, I just stretched out the chair, more or less, like a, an accordion. Um, and and some, some opinions about it. We've delivered to, to Stockholm Central Station, for example, um, to, to Malmö Airport, to shopping malls. And, and the nice thing here, working with sustainable design, is you get so much good reactions back. Um, they, the, you sort of, the furniture and what you do talk to people. And, and they, they often, they, well, they may want to buy it because of that, or they may want to buy it because they like the design. But still, it adds a, a good feeling to people, and they, they will be... Uh, they will tend to, to like what you do, even if there would be something, a little remark, well, you have to fix it, but the overall, the overall feeling by people is much more positive. positive. Um, and and um, I think that it, start, it makes a good uh, point to start off with. And, and it's nice to work with for you as a person as well. You come with a positive message selling these, these pieces of furniture. Or, or working with them, and also the people working, well, the team. You do good things, and it's nice to go to work. And, well, the clients buying them, they, they also feel nice. It's not, well, we bought, bought good stuff, and, well, it feels good. We want to show them to the world. Um, they're proud of them. Um, and, um, and then they also have, and they should have, good abilities, like the taggers have left them alone. Um, 
this shopping mall had problems with, with tagging before. And, and uh, all of a sudden, with the new furniture, they're not tagged anymore. And, and well, it's difficult to, uh, to explain, but, but it could be that sort of the furniture talks to people, that, uh, that talk to their feelings. They don't want to destroy them. Uh, but here is also a, a, uh, a factor of, of uh, hard wax oil that we use for the surface. That's a lot more sustainable than, the, than varnish. And that, that could be filled in like shoe polish. It has another better function than the varnish. And if somebody would scratch tag them, you can just fill it in. It doesn't, it's not visible anymore. Uh, and so there is no tagging, so there will, nobody will tag. Sort of one starts and other follows. So that's a, a good function, actually, uh, that comes with the sustainable. Um, another piece of furniture here with a nice story what, that we just introduced. It's leftover uh, wood, wood parts from Chaz's uh, floor manufacturing here in Sweden. Um, with a nice story. And the tree that you saw outside, win winner of the Green Furniture Award 2010. Um, that also then has another function of this. It's, a nat it's all natural. It's, uh, it's uh, Swedish birch and uh, unbleached wool uh, and nothing else. But it has this acoustic function that it adds. So it's, it's, um, it eats the echo of the room. It's another function that comes well with the, all of the wool and the nice uh, uh, natural material. Actually, a, a real tree has sort of that function, not this much, but that diffusing function of, of uh, acoustics also. Uh, bringing in the natural function in the room. Uh, and it can look like this. It, it gives, they're all unique as well. You set them up just like trees. They grow in a little different uh, uh, angles. Um, and they give a very nice sphere to the room. This is in Copenhagen University. Uh, this is in the uh, Gothenburg Airport. And uh, this is a shopping mall in another colony. Uh, and in the restaurant environment. Um, creates a, a little space in the room, uh, both visually and acoustically. And uh, traveler sac satisfaction raised significantly. significantly. Um, Orastersund Airport was best in Sweden among the airports, 84% uh, uh, satisfaction rates. And after this installation and some nice benches, uh, it went up to uh, 292. Um, and I must say, this is not more comfortable to sit on than what they had before. But it brings so much feelings. And I, I was there and when, when it was installed here, and people came in used to traveling there and just say, wow. <laughs> and and this, happy, this is happiness that it brings in. Um, it's part of the sustainable design as well. And uh, behind this, and this runs on screens in the airport. They're so proud of it. They want to show that, this to the world. They are woven here in Malmö in, at Rosengård as a social integration project. Uh, they're woven with with the leftover fabrics woven in Sweden, EU, EU Echo labeled, um, and, uh, and also maintenance-wise, another better function of the sustainable design. If you get ketchup on that part, it can be removed, put back in five minutes, it uh, costs 38 crowns, and, and um, you can keep a new piece of furniture forever. You just well, every six months we have the, the, the maintenance of this uh, area. Every six months we go there and we have removed one part per seat uh, in average and it stays as new. And it can even, it even, even updates over time. Uh, you could add other colors. So you could add blue ones. Every time you update, you add blue ones. And over 10 years time, it would be blue, um, but gradually, uh, which is another better function of the sustainable purpose. And here it's woven in uh, jackets, left, um, uh, taken back jackets from Klettermösen, sustainable jackets, uh, as a, a show uh, area. Um, great. And uh, other opinions about this. Something to be proud of. Something that even a school 
that actually have discovered, the schools that have discovered they have brands are proud of. Showing their pupils uh, how things can be run, showing the parents that this is a sustainable school we take care of. And uh, I'll say something about sustainable thinking in design. Yeah, this is a standard chair um, with a lot of parts. And uh, if you sort of break that down to a product tree, here's a chair, here the swiveling part and the sitting part and the backrest and all that. So the swiveling part, it has wheels and it has bearings and it has uh, blah, blah, blah. And looking at the wheel, when it's, it has... Um, it has bearings inside, it has a uh, well, uh, rubber part and a uh, plastic part and a uh, swiveling part. And, and all these, they are made of chemicals that are made of other chemicals that are made of other chemicals um, with a tree around the world. And for every part here, you'll have this kind of tree. And then you want to make sure nothing goes wrong and you want to have complete control of what's in your chair, chemically-wise, chemically-wise. So just go down this tree. There'll be some 100,000 suppliers involved before you're at basic substances around the world, most of them in China, probably. Um, so you, you, you'll discover that people that say, we have complete control of what's in our products, well, not if you have this many parts. And, and the basic message to you, well, if you might want to make something sustainable and have control of your product, well, keep it to few substances and few parts. Keep it simple and local if you can. Uh, so you actually can go down to the suppliers um, and check what they're doing. Um, and especially when it comes to chemicals, they are made of other chemicals, and it's a large, the chemical industry, it's one of the world's largest industries. Um, and if they can remove something, they will. And you won't know. Change something. Um, and a little about what kind of position you could take. Wow, this was moved around. Um, but uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so um, dealing with, with uh, sustainable design, you, can, you could sort of react to legislation or you could uh, take a proactive uh, position. And if you take a proactive position and you are better than the legislation, you're safe society-wise. So you don't have to bother about legislation. You're on top of that and you can move forward. And it's so much more, it's not more work. It's just so much easier. You don't, there are new legislations you have to follow and blah, blah, blah. But if you're a lot better, it um, feels better, but you also, it's, it's less work. Um, which is what a, a good thing. And working sustainably, you get a lot of good attention. Um, so as a large, last image, this was last week, I believe. Uh, or two weeks ago, we won the, the Malmö um, Best Sustainable Enterprise Award at uh, Nanningslivs Gala, at the, the gala for, for business here. So this is on, on stage at the Malmö, Malmö Opera. And, uh, um, well, just as, as, as I said before, a lot of positive attention, positive media that you get from this kind of things. Uh, positive reactions from all over, positive team spirit, positive, well, go to work feeling. Um, and um, um, yeah, I think uh, this is a good wrap up and a sort of a feeling you could bring with you. And, and remember, sustainable design should be better design. And in that way, it will sell, it will be successful, and it will be more sustainable design. In that way, better for the planet. Thank you. <laughs>